So how does our light this feel so alive, despite being very stylized and not having what you would say realistic anatomy? And yet it's the most believable and fresh and energetic and dynamic thing I've ever seen. That's an Oscar winning Italian artist, by the way, if you were wondering, I'll put the link in the description. So if you feel like your drawings don't have that wow factor or that your figures look stiff and lifeless, no amount of detail will save them ever. So let's break out of that overthinking trap and capture the energy that makes your art stand out. So grab the sketchbook and draw with me while you watch this time lapse of me drawing. Well, you might be thinking, why should I focus on loose gesture when I'm aiming for detail and polish work? It's easy to fall into the trap of overthinking and over detailing, but here's the catch. If your gesture drawings are too rigid or lifeless, no amount of detail will save them. Stiff figures can end up looking flat and unconvincing. No matter how precise your lines are, it's all about capturing energy and flow in the early stages of drawing. Imagine this. Your figures burst with vitality and action, each pose conveying motion and emotion with ease. Loosening up your gesture isn't just about making your drawings look better, it's about capturing the essence of movement and making your characters resonate with viewers, because at the end of the day, that's what matters if you want to be successful with your audience. When your gesture is fluid and expressive, your entire drawing will feel more engaging and dynamic. By focusing on loosening up, you'll see a major boost on how well your characters interact with their scenes and how effectively they convey their story. It's the story that you tell that counts, remember that, it's not just about looking good, it's about feeling alive on the page. So let's break down the steps to announce your gesture drawings based on some principle that you should literally sculpt in your brain and practice endlessly. So number one, warm up with quick loose gestures. Start with quick uh, 30 second to 1 minute gesture sketches. This fast loose drawing helps you capture the basic action and flow of the figure without getting bogged down by details. Focus on the overall movement and rhythm. This will help you loosen up and get comfortable with spontaneous drawings. So quickness is the key factor here. Number two, draw from a variety of artists. So studying other artists to improve your own art, it's always been the most effective approach you can take to actually level up your technique. I have a huge list of artists from which I learned a lot, not only by copying uh, their work, but also actually tracing their line work to understand how they can possibly move their hand while drawing. So recently I've been critiqued by Otto Schmidt at a comic convention. He works for DC, Marvel, Disney, etc, etc. He completely destroyed my work <laughs> and it's been wonderful. I learned so much. So what did I do after that? I went home and started copying all his artworks from Instagram. So explore different artist styles and approaches. And this is also how you develop your own style later, but this is an entire topic for another video. So for instance, Joe Madureira's dynamic figures or Frank Frazetta, obviously his powerful forms. I mean, who didn't study Frazetta at least once? I did. So they can inspire you to push your figures to the limits. Study their work and try to replicate their gesture to understand how they can create such energetic poses so that in the end this diverse exposure will enrich your own style. Number three, use simple shapes and blocking techniques. Instead of diving straight into detailed anatomy, start with simple shapes like circles, ovals and rectangles. This approach helps you focus on the figure's general proportions and movement. Sketch these basic forms loosely and refine them into more detailed figures later, maintaining the fluidity of your initial sketch. The point is, I see many people going straight into the minuscule details, especially portrait artists who make hyperrealistic drawings, and I'm not saying they're not good at what they do, but all they do is just copy a photo. Yes, the drawing comes out beautiful, rich of details and textures, but at the end of the day, they don't know how to actually design a figure. There was a guy in my class who was excellent at making celebrities' portraits, but when the assignment was to do a character design, all he could do was a stickman. <laughs> 
So number four, incorporate continuous line drawing. Practice drawing figures with a continuous line without lifting the pencil. And this is a cool one because this technique forces you to think about the figure's overall flow and connection. It's a great way to maintain a sense of motion and fluidity throughout your drawing. Number five, experiment with different perspectives. Try drawing figures from various angles and perspectives. Experimenting with foreshortening and unusual viewpoints can help you uh, understand how to position figures dynamically and dramatically within a scene. It's also a great way to develop a sense of depth and spatial relationships. So here is a bonus tip. Regularly sketch from comic books. In my opinion, apart from being the best medium to tell a story so you also learn a bit of storytelling, in comics you can find a great variety of poses and perspective so you can train your eye for depth, but also you see how the artist made the character act and play like it was alive. Fill pages with different poses and gestures to build your visual library. This practice not only enhances your skills, but also keeps your drawing process fresh and engaging. If you found this helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, but most importantly, comment what you think about it. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next one.